you know, this video right here, while I was watching it um, earlier, made me very emotional uh, because I have a heart for souls. You know, my name has been driven to the ground many, many times. Um, a lot of accusations, a lot of attacks on my name because of what I do. You know, the Lord has called me to be a watchman. And with that calling, a lot of people will attack you. A lot of people won't understand you. But the Lord told me in 2020 that exposure would take place and many false prophets would rise and get exposed. And this was before I was in ministry. Now, in this video, Greg Locke humbly renounces Lovi Elias because of, because of his association with Passion Java and the stuff that Lovi's been doing recently and in the past and whatnot. You know, I, this is a God move. And I can't hate on Greg Locke. I'm not going to. I've been in a position where I've been deceived before that I've honored people and loved people and thought they were my friends when they're actually false prophets and sorcerers. So I understand where he's coming from because I've been in that position of being deceived and trusting people. But we're going to play this video. Um, it brought some vindication for me, right? Um, and it has opened a lot of people's eyes that they're lacking in discernment. But God bless you, Greg, Greg Locke. Um, let's, let's play this video. Not a hit or miss. Stop playing with people's emotions. You hear me? Stop playing with people's emotions. The prophetic is real, but the pathetic and synthetic and the guesthetic has made the prophetic seem false. Everybody okay? Rex. I'm going to ask that in about 10 minutes. Because we're going somewhere. And I love you enough to go there. And it's going to be a very difficult conversation for me. Okay? Very difficult. It's not easy. So everybody, red, yellow, black, and white, tall, short, fat, skinny, hairy, head, and bald, tune in. This is about to be a very difficult conversation, not to you, from me. Because I want to explain something to you. I've, I've talked to my staff about this, matter of fact, 30 minutes before church tonight. I put this on them, and I said, I'll be more candid with you guys than I will with the church because we're on live stream. Watch, getting on my nerves. I need to be lighter for what I'm about to say. So I'm going to weigh my words wise because everybody in the mama's going to take them out of context on the internet. So I got to make sure I don't have to back out of anything. Okay? Everybody good? I believe in prophecy, thousand percent. I've benefited from it. Our church has grown from it, benefited from it. Thousand percent. Okay? I told you a while back that I am loyal to my friends to a fault. And that's okay, loyalty's a rare bird these days. You ought to be loyal. But you can never swim in the mixture of being more loyal to a friend than loyal to the truth of the gospel. Come on, preach that, come on. Okay? So, uh, let me just, let, I'm, I'm going to kind of start backwards and we'll kind of come in the back door on this. Some of you, this name will mean nothing to you and that's fine. Don't al ever allow it to mean anything to you. And you have to understand, number one, I have a lot of skin in the game. I have a lot of on the scenes, on the stage, behind the scenes, behind the stage. So, in, in, in running the risk of sounding like a jerk, let me say this. If you've never been in the positions that I've been in, you don't get the privilege of criticizing me for what I'm about to say. Because I've been there. I've got their phone numbers. I've been to their places. I've hugged them. I've talked to them. I've ministered with them. Okay? So there's this little cat that has influenced somebody in our church, by the way, that I love dearly. And some of you know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to go into all that. But there's this little dude out there named Passion Java. Hmm. Come on, man. Okay? Prophet Passion. First of all, that's not even his real name. It's a fake name. It's a made-up name. Okay, people that use fake names... 
do that for a reason. This ain't Hollywood. Tell me who you really are. So Java is, uh, he's kundalini spirit 1,000%. 100%. Remote control anointing, tripping people from a distance, spirit of divination. I'm, I'm trying to be very, very kind. I really am. Okay? But there's some people that you don't have to be necessarily that kind to. Because the Bible says when you know somebody is false, you call them out. Come on. Preach that. Okay, you call them out. And, and I don't, it's, 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 it's the connection that gets me. And that, that's where I get a little emotional. And so I'll explain something to you. Uh, Java's a witch doctor. Mm-hmm. 1,000%. He's a witch doctor. Come on. And I hate that to say that, but the Bible says he's a Simon the Sorcerer. He only cares about power, money, influence, Ferraris, and women. And I know that one to be 1,000% the truth. Facts. Okay? Come on. So he's part of a group of people that are in a a very tightly, it's not even loosely, a very tightly knit prophetic society. I'm telling you. They go to a certain mountain, they go to a certain river, and they are taught how to be a prophet. I'm okay, if you're a prophet, you. the Holy Ghost will teach you how to be a prophet. Preach that. Preach that. Come on. So I've had real reservations for a very long time, even more so than reservations. Triple red flags with Java. And people have asked me, what do you think about it? Okay. The, the demon slayers, you know, we've all talked about it. Uh, it, it, it started uh, to bring about some of the original dissension with the demon slayers and Daniel Adams and all of that, right? Just, and, and I'm not against I love Daniel. I love Daniel, okay? And I'm still with Vlad and Joseph Z speaking at Daniel's conference at the end of November, 1st of December, provided one person is not on the slate which happens to be in this prophetic grouping. His name's uh, E.J. Newton. Okay? So look, I'm careful with this because I've been very close to the flickering flame for a long time. And I wouldn't even, if I wasn't such a public figure with such exhaustive honesty before my church, I wouldn't even have to tell you this because... I, I feel like I, I, I led some people this way a little bit. So now I have to publicly be like, okay, let's, let's clean the poo-poo up a little bit, okay? Okay, are you okay? Okay. So this guy's a witch doctor. Yep. He's got one of our guys witched in our church. Mm -hmm. And I love the guy that he's got witched. But when I saw it, I'm like, uh-oh. He's about to go from being broke to being a millionaire overnight. And he yep. did. He went from me paying for peanut butter sandwiches to now he's Gucci'd up, wide slam open. That's how it works. Went from calls. obscurity to fame overnight. Oh, I'm telling you, overnight. And it's the same MO with all of these people in this prophetic stream. Hmm. Okay? Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, anybody that's in this stream ends up going that way. Now, why that's even important up until this point is because of this. I am friends with, you understand, Lovie Elias. I am. We flew to L. And I understand that, right? I used to be friends with a certain pastor. I looked at him as my big brother. I was trying to learn from him, but he's a, he's a false prophet. You operate in divination. And when I got warnings from my brother and another person that this false, this, that this pastor was operating in witchcraft, I didn't want to believe it. I'm like, there's no way. But until the signs came and what he was actually doing to me, my family, it broke my heart. I understand this. Play to see it for ourselves. I have more skin in the game than everybody in this church combined right now. I have more skin in the game than any of the demon slayers combined, including Daniel. I've talked to him for hours. We FaceTimed, so listen very closely to what I am and what I am not saying. Remember when Joseph C. said, when a prophet begins to get off kilter, 
he can get to about the 60 fold and he still has some salvage ability to him. You can still reel him back in. I feel like Lovie is there, but I have to unhitch our church and my influence from him. Come on. Okay. By the way, can, can I say something? And, and not sound abrasive. When I was going into this tonight, I was thinking to myself, Lord, please don't let this come off as a racist issue. It's not racist. I'm with you. I'm with you. And the black folks stood up and clapped for me when I said it. You ain't racist. I'm with you. So listen. I'm going to tell you why this is hard for me. Because I'm loyal to my friends. I have, on a number of occasions, questioned, asked, begged for him to publicly break off his alliance with Java. But he won't. He won't. He won't. What I tell y'all, he won't. So if you got a problem with Pastor Java, you got to understand that you, you, you got to have a problem with Lovi too, because Lovi defends everything Pastor Java does, everything. And it's put me in a very precarious situation. Because I feel like as a shepherd, in trying to gather facts and information for myself, I inadvertently brought spiritual warfare into our tent that we did not necessarily have to have because in my, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, I'm very careful. In my connection to the network, we inherited a familiar spirit. Come on. Hear me? I've been teaching this for so long, familiar spirits. I hope he will make a public declaration. And I'm not going to force him into it. It's not my place. And so it, it, it puts me in a, in a strange spot because when you have a big platform, everybody wants to, to jockey for position and figure out whose side you're on. First of all, I'm on the side of Jesus, you understand, right? Come on, man. Come on, right? Come on. But I have a responsibility to people that I've introduced that network to. Yes, because it's not about us and our friends, but it's about those we're shepherding. It's about our influence. It's about our following. So if we endorse people as leaders, if we say this is my friend as leaders, and this person's a sorcerer, it, it, it brings harm to the body of Christ. And I feel like I just want to cry right now, yo, because I've been screaming this since last year. And I love how Greg came out in full humi humility. He made a mistake. He didn't know he was blinded. And we can be blinded sometimes. I've been blinded in the past. I don't know everything. To also get up and introduce a level of truth that is difficult for me to say and say, you know what? I'm out. We're not going that way. Can't. Now, I won't tell you what to do in your house. You watch who you want to. I am so forgiving in areas when I know somebody. That, that's, why it, that's why emotionally it bothers me because, you know, I can come off all half cop. Uh, no, no, listen, when it comes to Java, I wouldn't spit on him if he caught fire. He's a witch doctor. Facts. But I think Lo So is Lovi. Lovi is a victim of the spell that he's under from Java. So let's talk about that for a second. So Lovi is um, uh, Passion Java's spiritual son. So Lovi is under a spell. 
to begin with. But Lovi has been false because he came under Passenjava a long time ago. Before he had influence, he was under Passenjava. He accredits Passenjava for his success, influence, and everything. So Lovi has been under Passenjava for a long time. So this is where Greg is getting it wrong, right? Lovi is under a spell, but it's not just because of Passenjava. It's not just because of that. There's something, other things that have happened, covenants with the devil. This is why their doctrines are demonic and everything. I think Lovi is still salvageable. I, I pray he is. Not even for the sake of my friendship. Shoot, I pray for the sake is. of his influence, because he has one. And he can be right, and he can be accurate. And he has some deep revelation about some things. And it, and it pains me to have to shepherd this way. And I don't care if the people online understand it or not. People that don't have skin in the game don't get a vote. This is one of the hardest public, at least declarations or separations that I've ever had to make. I understand. Because I've been, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've had my reservations. I'm like, man, I'm going to overlook that. Maybe he didn't mean that. And I've talked, oh, no, I didn't mean that, Pastor. And he's very, he, he, if he called me right now, he'd be super respectful. He would call me Pastor. And so we have no, no qualms, okay? I'm thinking about it, so let me, let me explain it like this. Let me, I need four people. Can I get four kids? Four kids. Four, uh, come on. All up. Four of you. That's three. I need one more. What school you go to? Ours? Okay, come on. Uh, all right. <clears throat> I need y'all on the other side. Y'all stand over here. Okay. You stand here. You stand here, right beside him. Face them. So just a little bit apart. Okay, right there. Okay. Now, you guys, this ain't weird or nothing. I want y'all to yoke arms, okay? I want you yoke arms. I want you to stand right there. Now, stay like that. Stay like that. You're Lovi, okay? You're Java. Just listen. You're Lovi. You're Java. Who are you? Jabra. Yeah. Not Jabba the Hutt. Java. Okay. <laughs> Remember I taught you about the, the ills of secondary separation. I can be your friend just because I don't like who you're friends with. Okay? That's fine. Here's why that's true. Because, which one are you? Java. Okay. Here's my brother. Here's my friend. Because they're simply acquaintances, as I am, he and I can still fellowship. We can still go places. We can still do stuff, right? Because they're acquaintances. I go back and stand up. But when you're connected, when I yoke up with you, I don't get one of you. I get both of you. You can have I'm, a seat. Y'all can have a seat. Give these boys a hand. Thank you, guys. You see what I'm saying? Come on. So I'm against secondary separation. I, you can have all the friends you want to, but when you're connected to them at the hip and you can't break away, then that's a problem for the whole church. Yes. It's about, it's about the body of Christ, the whole church. And I respect him than more than a lot of these other leaders that behind the scenes they delete their posts and they don't they don't say anything they don't drop names he dropped names i know he may think that lovi is redeemable everyone's redeemable but at the end of the day you know what i mean but at least he dropped names and publicly renounced some of these other guys didn't want to drop names i respect this so that's not fun pastoring those aren't those aren't fun phone calls that you have to field Everybody on Instagram, make your case. Why are you doing this? Why are you still pretty? It puts me in a weird spot. But I would be amiss if I didn't tell you the finality of the straw that broke the camel's back. I overlooked the spiritual NyQuil stuff. I figured that was a joke. But hypnosis is not a joke. It's demonic. I overlooked the the palm thing. I've overlooked a lot of stuff. I've asked about it. And these are all videos that I've exposed that were years ago and I brought to the surface. And everyone started watching them. They went crazy viral on all social media platforms. Because I'm like, 
third eye. That's straight up Hinduism. What do you mean open your third eye? So I got all the explanations on that. And, and I get it. Java's the, he, he's the ramrod to all of this. He was the one I was talking about this weekend. Oh, if you're not blessed like me, then you don't have the power of God. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever. Can I remind you? All you have to do is fall down and worship the devil one time, and he'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. <laughs> On. What is a prophet of man? There's a reason they get famous overnight. There's a reason they go from peanut butter and jelly to Gucci in 24 hours. There's a what is a prophet of man to gain the whole world but lose their soul? There's a reason. There's a reason. So I overlook some stuff. Then this woman shows up in California. Look, it's one thing when people use clips against me, but when I post the clip, that's altogether different. When I'm the one that says, Whoa, look what the Lord has done. Okay, then I'm the culprit, right? So this woman has a 96-year-old mother that dies in her house. She gets up on Lovie's platform and says, uh, watch it, watch the video. I, I was calling on the Lord and it wasn't working. So I called on your spirit, Lovey. Now what comes next blew my mind. She said, and I went and got a picture of you, put it on my altar. And your picture resurrected my mama from the dead. Woo! Listen, I shared this a, a few days ago. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm not against miracles. But let me tell you something. On a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night or any day for that matter, if somebody climbed on this platform and said that, I'd have been like, whoa, 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 you stop right there. Whoa, you better give credit to Jesus. You better give credit to the Holy Ghost. You better burn that picture. Key thing he just said, burn that picture. Not just give credit to Jesus, but burn that picture. What you're doing with the altar and the picture is demonic. But instead... It was a deafening statement of celebration. And there are no two ways to slice necromancy, divination, and familiar spirits. Yep. That was beyond a violation of biblical protocol. A violation. Now. I pray he puts out a message tomorrow and be like, look, man, I, whew, I was wrong on that. But I won't hold my breath. I won't hold my breath. So look, I know some of you are like, oh, man, okay, that's fine. I'm not going to tell you what to do in your house. I'm your pastor, not a pope. But... Uh, once the chickens came home to roost and it started affecting somebody that I discipled and I saw it before my very eyes and I sat down with wise calculated people that came from the same region all of them came from and they began to lay it all out and say this is what's happening this is what will happen next this is what will happen next this is every day it played out exactly the same So I, I, I guess I, I, I say all of that to say that if the church has been given the gift of prophets, it's also been given the curse of false prophets. Come on, man. I could scream and just cry right now. I remember when Greg locked me to post a while ago about how Lovi says friend and he defends Lovi, blah, 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 blah. And I came in the comments, right? And I, I, I said what I had to say. And a lot of his followers came at me, attacking me and whatnot, you know, saying what I do is wrong. You shouldn't do this. Lovi's a man of God, blah, 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 all this stuff. And Greg responded to me and was defending him too. 
you know, and Greg at the time actually thought Lovi was real. They were friends. They got close and whatnot. I can understand that, right? But my job in that moment was to um, bring an awareness to push forth those videos because I know Greg was watching them. I know his following was watching them. And there's been a lot of people that have been coming, uh, that have been uh, coming to uh, repent. The Lord told me that many people will come and repent. You know, Tiffany Montgomery came out publicly, called Lovi false. I called them false. The Demon Slayers called them false. Uh, Greg Locke now has called them false. There's going to be more authentic voices that will continue to call these people false, but you're going to see the false voices not say anything. The false voices that, that won't say anything. Like Daniel, probably not ever going to say anything. Why? Because he does the kick thing like 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 uh, Passion, Passion Java and the thing like Passion Java. Not going to say nothing. And you would think for a guy like me, that wouldn't be a hard statement to make. But I want you to understand that through my tears tonight, I will break off any friendship, any relationship, any deal to stand on the tri side of truth, holiness, and righteousness, and the well-being of this local New Testament body of believers. Come on, I love that, because it's not about friendships, it's not about influence, it's not about people, it's not about being politically correct, but it's about the truth. Okay? We got a pianist. Can somebody come up and play for me a minute? I don't know how to end something like that. I don't even want to keep on preaching. I'm, I'm going I'm to do something. Uh, I, want you to, I want you to lift your hands. I want everybody to stand up all over them. Stand up all over them. I want you to turn to that camera and I want you to put your hands towards that camera right there. Now listen, Java, you're a witch doctor. Yes. And I call you for what you are. You're a Simon the sorcerer. You need to repent and get saved or you're going to bust hell wide open. There's no Facts. way around that fact. Facts. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm getting kind of emotional right now because understand, man. There's times I've been blinded and I understand when you publicly endorse someone who happens to be false and doing operating from another spirit and you brought damage to the church, your church, confusion to the church. Like, as a pastor, it gonna hurt you. But love the lies, I love you. And I befriended you for a reason. And maybe this is the reason. Because you're, you're a gifted man. And I'm clouded to figure out which side you're on right now. On the side but of the I pray devil. that you'll come to a right understanding that some of the people you're in agreement and alignment with are not going to pull you up for the kingdom. They're going to pull you down into further darkness. Into the pit of hell. And I know all the heresy hunters love to use your YouTube videos. You know, and we're not heresy hunters, you know, because I'm the main one that does the videos. Listen, Greg, you wouldn't have got to this point if you never saw my videos. You saw my videos. The truth has come. Against you, and I won't do it. There's people in our church that are hurt that I've had to make this statement tonight. I pray you're at a 60-fold moment where you can come back. I'm asking you to examine your friendships. We're public figures. We don't get to air out grievances in private all day long. 
He said, we're public figures. We don't always got to do things privately because a lot of these, the Bible talks about how, how public rebuke is better than secret love, right? So a lot of these public people expose things privately, but they don't say anything publicly. And then the congregation, the mass, their mass influence stays confused or this person still supports this person, that person. This is why it has to be publicly known. Oh, why they didn't drop names? Why didn't they drop names? This had to be known. This had to be said. And I respect it, man. We're not always going to know the truth at the right time or whatever. I believe this was the point of time. I believe that God used their relationship or their friendship for greater exposure to take place. I believe it. I didn't understand before. Now I see the ways of God. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts, declares the Lord. Maybe God allowed Greg Locke to be blinded in those moments just so that relationship could grow. Now the Lord opened his eyes so he could see the truth. I feel the living rooms of our church with your videos because I've believed in you. at the expense of some of my own friendships, and that's cool. I'll stand on the side of truth. And if you're on that side, we'll be allies, be friends. I'll help you, I'll take a bullet for you. But I can no longer publicly support your ministry if Java is gonna be a part of it. And you're breaking away from him or the lack thereof will tell me which side you're actually on. I'm not trying to force your hand. Come on, man. If anything, mine's been forced. <laughs> His hand has been forced by God because Pastor Java teaches on the third eye. Astral projection promotes this lavish lifestyle of money, Ferraris, Mustangs, Lamborghinis, boasts about his money, teaches on so many demonic things, you know, I'll never speak ill of you and I'll never let anybody in this church speak ill of you. I think you're under a spell. And I pray through the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ it'll break off of you. And you'll operate in what I believe you have a true gift of the prophetic. But this passion nonsense is not going to help you. And so... For the record, I know Lovi is operating in full-blown divination, full-blown. Greg Locke doesn't know 100% right now. I think he's like 80% sure. But Lovi operates in 100% divination, witchcraft, 100%. He got impartation from Passion Java. He was groomed by Passion Java many, 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 many years ago. He's a product of Passion. I'm out until that's dealt with. Look for you. But I can no longer publicly support your ministry if Java is going to be a part of it and you're breaking away from him or the lack thereof will tell me which side you're actually on. I'm not trying to force your hand if anything mine's been forced <laughs> I'll never speak ill of you and I'll never let anybody in this church speak ill of you I think you're under a spell And I pray through the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, it'll break off of you. And you'll operate in what I believe you have a true gift of the prophetic. But this passion nonsense is not going to help you. And so I'm out until that's dealt with. Our church loves you. My kids love you. My staff loves you. I love you. But this is our uh, this is our Peter and Paul moment. I rebuke you only because of who you fellowship with. I think you ought to apologize for the video, and I think you ought to tell Java to take a hike. But there'll never be an ounce of gossip that comes out of my mouth online or on a microphone about you in a green room nope i'll just assume say nothing 
So to everybody online that thinks how easy this would be, well, you're not in my situation. So, Father, we... I understand. We bless your name. We bless this service tonight. Thank you for a church that can take the hard truths with the easy to swallow truths. And Lord, this, this has been hard. But I'm, I, I just, I can't make excuses for things you're clearly uneasy with. Come on. And I get it. There's a cultural difference. Yeah, it's not about that. I'm African. It's not culture. We have a clear line that's been drawn and crossed of someone that is the common denominator that has witched and bewitched and spelled and vexed and hexed a lot of people in the name of God. And I won't allow it at this church. Oh, man. <gasps> so I pray, Lord, that the truth will be made known, that exposure would come swiftly. In Jesus' name. That the lines would clearly be drawn. In Jesus' name. And that sides would forcibly have to be taken. Who was on the Lord's side? But as far as this church is concerned, Lord, we won't allow mixture. Come on. We won't allow Holy Spirit and evil spirits to operate on the same level of the prophetic. Come on. So, Father, I pray you give us such a clear understanding of what has been wept and taught tonight that we will say with Elijah, we are a prophet of Jehovah. No. Oh, or we are a prophet of Baal. Woo. How long halt you between two opinions? And Lord, both of them were called prophets. Both of them operated in the prophetic. One with the right spirit, one with the wrong. Both of so Father, right. I do not believe that our biggest fight in the church is going to be a political 2024 fight. I believe it's going to be a prophetic battle Come on. between those that operate in the Holy Ghost Come on. and those that operate in a magic spirit of divination. Yes. So God help us to know the difference. Yes, Jesus. Help us to know the difference. Help us to know the difference. Help us to know the difference. And that's my prayer for you all right now. The Bible says my people perish because of the lack of knowledge. Help us, Lord, to know the difference. Give us the, give, give us the gift of discerning of spirits to be able to distinguish between good and evil. Discernment. Now, for myself, that was like vindication for me because the Lord always told me that he would vindicate me. So when I was exposing a lot, a lot of different people, there was times where I just wanted to quit and stop and the Lord kept telling to me, keep going, keep going, keep, keep going. And he would show me things and visions and dreams concerning these people and the stuff that they will push out would confirm the vision, right? And the Lord come and tell me to keep going and I have no personal issues with any of these people, Lovi, Passion, None of these people, right? But I had a problem with their doctrine and what they were promoting. The same thing with Greg Locke. Has no personal issues with Lovi, but he had a problem with the doctrine, right? The Bible says in Psalms chapter 135, verse 14, for the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed and you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and the vindication comes from me and their vi vindication from me declares the Lord. So it is the Lord that's vindicating my name right now. Obviously my name doesn't matter, but the Lord has actually called me as a, as his prophet, as a watchman, right? And the Lord is vindicating me right now. Everything I've been saying for the past year and a year and a half, you know, it's, it's, it's coming into fruition. It's here. We're in a battle and I pray your guys eyes open and you realize um, I was never here to attack people or tear people down. But I, I came here to release the word of the Lord to help many of you that are under spells and familiar spirits and demonic impartation. I hope your eye opens today and I hope you start to read the word of God. 
because Jesus Christ is coming soon and many of you are being deceived by these wolves and they're reeling you into these doctrines of demons. And the thing about Greg Locke is that these false prophets will recruit from your influence. They'll take from your influence. They'll recruit people from your church and make them false prophets. That's how it works. And overnight, they'll become sensations. <laughs> and, uh, I think Greg Locke needs to get my book, um, False Prophets, uh, Wolves in Sheep's Clothing. Yo, you can get this on Amazon. I think it'll be so powerful for you guys to understand everything that's happening in the body of Christ today. Uh, you can get it on Amazon, um, False Prophets, Wolves in Sheep's Clothing, because everything that's in this book um, talks about, it, it, it prophesies exactly what is taking place right now, right? And it'll give you an understanding more. If you want to learn more about false prophets, if you need discernment, because many of you keep um, listening to your leaders and they always have to repent or they were wrong before, study the word of God to get my book, False Prophets, Wolves and Sheep's Clothing. I'll put the link in the in the description. This is so powerful. And that's, that's all I got to say. Um, thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I pray, God, that you'll give people discernment that they will not chase signs and wonders, God, and I pray you'll be glorified through all this. We are on the Lord's side, in Jesus' name, amen.